Hi guys, so in this video I'm gonna go over the concept behind creating these uh, cascading arpeggio type lines like the one I just played. I think it's a great way to chain together some, uh, some different arpeggios over a chord and it's also a good example of how I use sweep picking in my playing because I use these one octave uh, arpeggios a lot more than what you find in other genres where you can get away with using triads and several octaves. So the lick I just played is in the key of F major and it's on these chords. G minor 7, C7, and F major 7. So that's a basic 2 for one in the key of F major. And the cascading arpeggios are happening on the 2 chord, so on the G minor chord. And if we take the line a bit apart, then um, what I'm using is actually a very simple principle. You probably already know that if you have a chord, you can often get away with using the arpeggio that's found on the 3rd of that chord. So that means if you have a G minor 7, you can also use the arpeggio from the 3rd, which is the B flat. So that's a B flat major 7. And of course, for the most part, you're going to be playing notes out of the G minor 7. And that's the principle we're using. So on this G minor 7, we're playing first a D minor 7 arpeggio, then a B flat major 7 arpeggio, and then a G minor 7 arpeggio. So we have diatonic thirds between the, the chords that we're using. So we have an arpeggio from D, so D minor 7, B flat major 7, and G minor 7. And basically what that is, is that we're playing a G minor 11 arpeggio. So if I play a G minor 11 arpeggio, that could be something like this. And then we're just playing it in groups of four. That's our D minor, B flat major 7, and then that's the G minor. And then because it's easier to play them, and also easy to phrase them nicely if we sort of put them on different string sets. I've laid them out like D minor, B flat major 7, G minor 7. But we don't have to use the entire 7th chord of course, we can also just use the triad. So if I make a line using the, so the basic triad, so the D minor, B flat major and G minor, that could be something like this. So here I'm just using first the D minor triad, the B flat major triad, and then the G minor triad, and then I'm turning it into the C7 altered lick and resolving that to the F major 7. And we can of course also use the top part of the chord. So if we have our D minor 7, then the top part of this, if we leave out the D, is going to be an F major triad. So that means that we would get an F. D minor and B flat major triads. And a line with that could sound something like this. And this concept is really easy to move around and fit on other chords as well. If we take our original set of uh, arpeggios, so the D minor 7, B flat major 7, and G minor 7, then if I want to play a similar set but then on F major, well, we already have a major 7 arpeggio in the middle. So if I just play that same set, but then transpose it so I have an F major here in the middle, then we get A minor, F major 7, D minor 7. And that works really well for the, for the sort of F, minor, F major 7 sound. And if we wanted to make one for a C7 arpeggio, well we can do exactly the same, so we're just going to do the uh, fifth, the third, and the root. So that would be the fifth is this one, so that's a G minor 7. Third is an E half diminished. And then the C7. So now we have. And then we can use that on a C7. And of course, there are more options. We can also just start on the E half diminished. And then use E, C, and A. And they will also work for a C7 type sound. You can also move it to a C7 altered. And that's what I'm going to go over in this next line. So in this line, I'm using three triads over the C7 altered. And I'm doing that by thinking of the C7 as a G flat 7 sharp 11. If you want to know more about how that works and how you can think about an, an altered chord in different ways, then you can check out my video called Three Approaches to the Alter Scale. Because there I go over how that works. So if you think about this from an, a G flat 7 perspective, then you have the arpeggio from the third, which is uh, actually just the triad from the third, so that's a B flat diminished triad. 
and then you get a D flat minor triad, and then an E augmented triad. And I play them in a descending way, so I'm playing first the B flat diminished, and then the D flat minor, and then the augmented triad, and then I resolve that to the 9 of the F major 7. So in this way you can see how you can look for sets of arpeggios that you can chain together in this cascading type effect and that's something that's nice to have in, have in your vocabulary so you can break up your egg note lines with something else once in a while. The way I'm playing the arpeggios in these examples are always with sweep picking. So just to cover how that works because you can actually make some exercises that are sort of geared and aimed to, directly towards playing these types of lines. So the first one I'm playing like a sweep where I'm starting with a downstroke and then doing three upstrokes. And uh, this is a fairly normal way to play a sweep, I think, in jazz, but if you want to work on this, you just work on your diatonic arpeggios on one string set. So if, if I take the middle string set here, that could be something like this. And the way I'm doing it now, I'm always going to be keeping the same picking. So it's always going to be down, up, 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 and then down, up, 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 all the way, and then just playing the diatonic arpeggios. Of course, you can also play the arpeggios in diatonic thirds because that's going to already help you think in terms of these triad sets or these arpeggio sets that you want to use for the cascading arpeggios. So that could be something like this. Then I had two ways when I was playing triads. And the first one is using a string set again. So if I do that on the on this middle string set, then what I'm doing is I'm playing the first note as a downstroke and then two upstrokes. And the advantage with this is that you sort of naturally get you get an accent on that first note. And that's phrasing wise really good, especially because you're playing groups of three notes and then you get this sort of moving accent that's not really fitting within the meter because it's every third eight note and not every fourth. Uh, if I do that through the scale, I would do the same thing, so just moving that diatonically through the scale, that could be this. And of course you want to work on this on all string sets. So maybe start with one string set and once that gets a bit comfortable you can move to the other ones. You're going to get used to the way the arpeggios move and what notes go where quite quickly and I think you're going to find that it's easy to move through the different string sets. In the last example, I'm using some triads that have two notes on one string and then the last note on the next string. And if I turn that into an arpeggio exercise with diatonic arpeggios, then that could be this. You should note that we can play this last exercise just as well using uh, legato also. So that's also an option. I just wanted to stay with the sweeping because I do that quite often and also because now we were almost talking about that. So. So this works as well, so you could do the whole exercise like... There are some ideas on how you can create these cascading arpeggio type lines. And also some exercises if you want to work on your sweep picking to execute them the same way that I do. Of course there are other ways to play this, you can use hybrid picking, you can use legato as I showed also. Uh, so you don't have to do it with sweep picking, but that happens to be the way that I do it mostly. So that's why I'm also including these exercises. If you like this video, then please like it here on YouTube, and if it's the first time you see one of my videos, then uh, subscribe to my channel. I publish a new lesson every Thursday, and I also do weekly Q&As, and there are lots of stuff with backing tracks and solos happening on, uh, on my channel. So if you're interested in jazz and improvisation and music theory, then uh, probably the stuff that's happening on my channel will interest you. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, then leave a comment on this video or connect with me on... Uh, Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and let me know there. It's nice to get some feedback from you guys and to hear what you guys want to hear lessons on or if you have any questions if something is unclear. And also this lesson is a little bit in a new format. If you have some thoughts on that then that's also really welcome. If you want to download a PDF of the examples that I went over in this video then you can go to the article on my website. Uh, there's a PDF download of all the examples in that one. And of course on my website you can also sign up to my newsletter if you want to stay up to date with what's happening that way. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and uh, until next time.